Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Sapien Thoughts where we discuss theophilosophical issues where we answer those common contentions of the detractors of Islam in addition to making our own arguments for the veracity of Islam. Today inshallah we're going to be tackling a contention that some of these anti-Islamic apologists have tried to put forth. One that stipulates or that asserts we could say that the Quranic pr presentation of cosmology is one that says that the sun it sets into a, a murky water spring. And why do they say that? Because of a verse in Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18 of the Qur'an, where Dhul Qarnayn, one of the protagonists, one of the uh, characters of the Qur'an, he goes uh, to a certain destination and then he says that he sees the sun, وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةً That he, see, he saw the sun uh, setting in a muddy spring. And they say this shows, uh, because uh, it's very clear in the Qur'an, they would argue that this shows that the sun, according to the Quranic cosmology, yes, uh, setting in a, in a spring of uh, uh, <laughs> murky water. Now let's, let's look at what the Mufassirun, the uh, exegetes of the Quran aforetime have said. Look at Baydawi, look at Ibn Kathir, look at Ibn Taymiyyah. Even though he didn't do like a, you know, a, a tafsir of the Quran, but he mentions this by mentioning that all of the spheres of the, uh, the, the, the Falak are mustadira or, or spherical. And Al-Qurtubi actually mentions in his tafsir that this, <laughs> yani, because obviously he was preaching or he was his homiletic type of exegesis was also being preached to a non-Arab audience. And a lot, a lot of individuals, they didn't understand that the word wajada could actually mean is perspectival. It's from the perspective of the individual. He said this obviously not talking about the sun, which is many, many times bigger than the earth in which we live in, sinking into the, yani the, uh, the, the spring of, uh, of murky water in that literalistic sense. And what is the evidence of this from the Arabic language? The evidence of this is the word wajada, wajada, which is what the word, the operative word that is used in this verse. It means one of the key meanings of it, according to Al-Sfahani, who wrote obviously one of the most authoritative uh, dictionaries for referencing the Arabic language, uh, Al-Fad Mufrat Al-Quran. He says in it that this wajada uh, could mean anything from the five senses. So it's perspectival and it's something from the five senses that is experienced from the person experiencing them. So this wajada is clearly in the Arabic language perspectival. And it's the anthropocentric phenomenological perspective. And so from this perspective, it seems to me that this is really flogging a dead horse or trying to put into the Qur'an what they wish really was clear in the Qur'an and that they hoped was already in there. Now you imagine sometime after today, maybe 100 years from now or 200 years from now, some atheists that live on, if the world continues to that, <laughs> that, that period of time, as they say, look at these fools that lived in the 21st century. They used to say that the sun sets, but we know from modern science that the sun doesn't set. We would say that these people are foolish, they don't understand how language works because sunset in the English language, because it's not something foreign. Sunset is, is obviously from our perspective, it's a linguistic kind of, uh, not idiom, but it's something which is um, common speech and is not intended in that literalistic way. So we would be saying that to them. Obviously, why can't you apply the same kind of common sense with the Quranic discourse? It's because you're begging, you're, you're, you're desperate to find some kind of thing, an entrance point for your narratives. And this is weak. Another thing that I would add, or that they say, is that well, had, there's another hadith which corroborates our understanding, which is the hadith when the Prophet was asked, supposedly asked, where does the sun set? And he says, تَغْرَبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةً That it goes into a spring of muddy water. Now this love of the hadith, this particular phraseology of the hadith, was, um, uh, th was narrated by one individual called uh, Al-Hakim ibn Utaybah, who is seen as a modellis, which means that he's weak. Basically, this individual does something called an ana, which means that he doesn't tell us where he gets his information from. Uh, he doesn't tell us who his teacher is. And so this an ana is a form of disqualification from the hadith science perspective. And so this particular phraseology is not to be understood as strong. The, and it's, that's why it's not mentioned Bukhari and Muslim. In fact, the hadith which is mentioned Bukhari is the one that we talked about in the other, in the other video, which of course you can watch in conjunction with this one if you want more information, the hadith of prostration. Now, if one argues that even though this is the case, we can do tahsin of the hadith or some kind of uh, strengthening of this hadith, and there are some scholars that say that this hadith is strong, and so on and so forth, well, we can say that if you want to play with weak hadiths and weak narrations, we can also bring forward the qira'ah of Ibn Mas'ud and qira'ah of Ibn Abbas, which is actually weak, uh, we, but can be argued to be strong in the same or similar senses that this one, where it says, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لَا مُسْتَقَرَّ لَهَا That the sun runs and it has no place of setting. 
is actually something which is attributed to both Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud. Now, one can argue if we do take this on board, wouldn't this run counter to what the Quran says, that it runs to a, a place of uh, uh, appointed for it? Well, actually, it, it, the jama'ah could be made or contradistinction can be made between, or harmonization can be made between the two, in so much as that we can say that one is talking about time, or the Day of Judgment, in the case of the, the Qira'ah, which is well known, and the other one is talking about place. And of course, we can make those arguments, but I won't make those arguments, because we have to stick with the integrity of the Islamic tradition of authenticating that which is authentic, and leaving inauthentic that which is inauthentic, or does not have the, um, the apparatus for being something which is an authentic hadith that should be taken as uh, a gospel, if you like, or in this case, a Qur'an wahi. For, for the Muslim. So uh, I would say that if you want to play with weak hadith, we can all play with weak hadith and weak narrations and weak qara'ah. And in fact, the one that I have is much clearer in, uh, by way of trying to prove the heliocentric model than the one that they have by way of trying to prove that the sun actually uh, literally uh, sets in the spring of muddy water. And this, of course, runs counter to the Islamic understanding or the Quranic reading where it says that the sun is in its own orbit in chapter number 21, verse number 33, in chapter number 36, verse number 40, in, chapter, in, in many different, in chapter number 35, verse number 39, verse number 5, and in different places of the Quran. So in summary, therefore, this is a weakened, uh, feeble uh, contention, a specious claim, which I hope now has been uh, completely and utterly refuted and hopefully that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.